All right, and so uh, this video is going to show you how to calculate, uh, how, to, how to perform a t-test uh, in, in SPSS. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to come up here. We're, we're going to do, we're going to do a, uh, a t-test, and we're going to test the hypothesis that the mean hours worked per week. So our research hypothesis would be that the mean hours worked per week is not equal to 40 hours, okay? So based upon the sample data, we're gonna see whether or not in the population, whether or not the mean hours worked per week is equal is not equal to 40. And of course, the null hypothesis would say that the mean hours worked per week is equal to uh, 40. So our research hypothesis, mean hours work per week is not equal to 40. Null hypothesis, mean hours work per week is equal to 40. Now I could uh, specify a direction, but I'm not gonna do that right now. And the reason why I'm not gonna do that right now is because with SPSS, you can't actually specify like a one-tailed versus a two-tailed test. SPSS always calculates a two-tailed test. And then what you need to do is based upon the significance level given to you with the two-tailed test, you then cut that in half to make it a one-tailed test. So I'll, so I'll show you all how to do that. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here and we're gonna click on analyze, click on analyze, click on compare means, and then we're gonna do a one sample t-test. So here we're doing a one sample t-test where we're pulling one sample from the population and we're comparing that mean to the specified value of 40, okay? Now you can also do a two sample t-test. Um, the two sample t-test in SPSS is called the independent samples t-test. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that next. So let's go ahead and do the one sample t-test, which is where we're comparing the mu to some specified value. Okay. So what we have here, I'm going to look for uh, mean hours work per week, because that's what we're going to be comparing. And then the mean hours work per week variable is hours one. So I'm going to click that into here. And then after I click hours one, it says test variable box. Like I said, I need some specified value that I need to compare this to. Now we already said that our specified value was 40. Okay, so in order to do the comparison, my specified value, the test value is going to be 40. I'm going to press okay. Okay, and now I have my output. Okay, so now we can see that in the sample, the sample mean or the general social survey sample, the sample mean is 41.32, which means that the mean of the sample is 41.32, standard deviation 15.277, the standard error of the mean is 0.516. Now this is, tells you whether or not you can reject, or whether or not you're gonna fail to reject the null hypothesis, the t-test. Okay, now the t is 2.554, with the degrees of freedom, which is equal to 874. Now, um, you would, well, at least the way you learn how to do it in the uh, textbook during the lecture, is you would take that degrees of freedom, you'd go into the distribution of the T, you see that degrees of freedom is equal to 874 in this situation, okay? After you do that, you know that there is no 874, so you're looking at the infinity, All right? Now, after you find that infinity, you're going to, I'll, I'll just go ahead and uh, pull this. Okay, so after you uh, look at the table, um, you would see the distribution of the T, you see that your degrees of freedom is 874. Um, you don't see 100, 874, you see the infinity symbol. Now we know we're doing a two-tailed test because I already said that uh, this test doesn't calculate one-tailed tests, it only calculates two-tailed tests. And then we look at the T for a 0 0.05 alpha level, so this is the T critical, the 1.960 is the T critical. And what we want is we want our T obtained, the one that we actually calculated or the one that SPSS calculated, to be either at or above this T critical value. Okay, so it's 1.960. So when we go back to the output, we see that our T is equal to 2.554, which gives us a significance of 0 0.011. And what that means is that our significance level is below the 0 0.05 alpha level. So we know that we can reject the null hypothesis at the 0 0.05 alpha level. Since we can reject the null hypothesis at the 0 0.05 alpha level, we can reject the null hypothesis, okay? Now let's just say that we were to do it uh, for a 0 0.01 alpha level. 
Well, we would need to make sure that our T obtained was above this 2.576. Well, let's go ahead and see if that T obtained is above that 2.576. When we look at the output, our T obtained is 2.554, which is below. So if you're doing a two-tailed test, um, your uh, the, the hypothesis is not statistically significant at the 0 0.01 alpha level for a two-tailed test. But like I said, if you're doing a one-tailed test, what do you do to this significance level? You cut it in half, okay? Because like I said, we learned um, when we were actually doing it by hand how to calculate it for a one-tailed test, and then all you do for a one-tailed test is you multiply it by two to get the to get the p-value for a two-tailed test. So this is essentially this sig two-tailed is the p-value for a two-tailed test. So what do you do to get it to a one-tailed test is you take this and you cut it in half. Since we know that the significance or the p-value is 0 0.011, we divide that by two and we would get 0 0.005, which means at the 0 0.005 level, we would be able to reject at the 0 0.01 alpha level. And then another thing that you could do is if you were to take this, and let's just say that we are treating it as a one-tailed test, and we see at the 0 0.01 alpha level, we know that our T is larger than this 2.326, okay? So we would know that if we're doing a one-tailed test, we could reject at the 0 0.05 and the 0 0.01 alpha level, but if we're doing a two-tailed test, um, if we're not specifying the direction, and in here with this hypothesis, we didn't specify direction, um, at this point, we could reject the null if we're doing a two-tailed test at the 0 0.05 alpha level, but not the uh, 0 0.01 alpha level. Okay. So, and then could, could we reject at the 0 0.001 alpha level uh, for the uh, one-tailed test? No, you wouldn't be able to reject at the 0 0.001 alpha level because when you cut this 0 0.0, one, one and a half, you get 0 0.055, and then that p-value is still higher than 0 0.001, okay? So that's how you do it for a one-tail test. So in this situation, we would reject the null hypothesis because as long as you can reject at the 0 0.05 alpha level, you can reject the null. Let's just say we're trying to do this for a two-sample t-test. So what we do is we come over to analyze and we go back to the compare means. But instead of doing a one sample t-test this time, we're going to do an independent samples t-test. So we click on that. And then, as you can see, this is a little bit different. So what we need to do is, we're still going to do it for hours. So let's go ahead and take a look at hours as our dependent variable. So that would be our test variable. And then we're going to compare these two different samples. So let's compare males versus females. Okay, Let's compare it to see whether or not males or females are... Uh, work more in the population. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to jump over here to sex and I'm going to put this into the grouping variables. Okay, so we're going to have two samples and if I were to rewrite this um, two sample t-test, so I would write it like my research hypothesis, the mu, the mu or the mean population mean of the first group is not equal to population mean of the second group, or the mu of the second group. Now, you could also, I mean, if I were doing this, if I were actually doing this, um, I would say that the average number of hours worked per week for men is going to be higher than the average number of hours worked per, uh, per week for women is. So I would say mu of one is males and the mu of two is females. So I would put a greater than symbol if I was actually doing this, but I, I'm just gonna do it for a two sim, for a two tail test, just because like I said already, um, SPSS always calculates it as a two tail test. But again, the workaround is you just take the significance level and you cut it in half and you get the, uh, the uh, P value or the significance level for a uh, one tail test. Now obviously, if you're writing the null hypothesis, it's gonna look like this mu the first group or the population mean for males is going to be equal to the population mean for females. So we're going to test this hypothesis, test the null hypothesis. 
So we're going to take a sex and we're going to jump it into this grouping variables. Now, when we jump this sex into this grouping variables, you're going to see these two questions. And now, why do you see these two questions? The reason why you see these two questions, question marks, is because we have not defined the groups. So there are two groups. It's a two sample t test. So we have two samples, and it needs us to specify which uh, group is the first sample and which group is the second sample. So I know that the general social survey coded the different sexes. Males were coded as one, and then females were coded as two. So I'm going to put males as one, because that's going to be my first group. And then females as two, that's going to be my second group. Okay. I'm going to press continue, and I'm going to, so my groups have been defined. I'm going to press OK. Before I get into uh, interpreting this, I want to jump back to the data view window. And the way that I know that males are coded as one and females are coded as two is because I come over here, I can right click and then click on variable information. And it tells me that males are one and that females are two. So when you look at this and it says one, one, well, I know that these first two respondents are males and I see two, 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 and there's quite a few twos. And then all of those respondents are females. Okay, so you don't see male, male, female, female. You see numbers and these numbers correspond to those labels. So now we can jump back to the output. And we see here that the mean hours uh, worked per week for men here, so we see males, is 45.02. So I guess about 45 men work about 45 hours per week. The N, which is the sample size for males, is 435. Sample size for females is 440. And then the mean hours work per week for females is 37.66. So if you take 45.02 minus 37.66, The difference in the mean hours of uh, work per week for these two samples is seven hours, 7.36 hours, okay. Uh, we have standard deviation of 15.754 for males, standard deviation of 13.870, okay. So that's kind of like the first piece of information that we have. So we know that men work on average more than women do according to these samples. Um, now we are gonna test whether or not this is statistically significant in the population, so we need this. Okay. So we need this data. So if you remember from the lecture, there were two um, kind of like equations or two formulas to calculate the T for a two sample T test. Um, they were both pretty extensive and both pretty long. One was if the variances uh, were equal, and then the other one was if the variances were not equal or not approximately equal. Um, so the textbook doesn't really talk about this, but this is called the Laverne's test for, e for equality of variances. Um, so the fact that I know that the significance level here is 0 0.017 tells me that, like I said, the textbook doesn't talk about this, but it tells me that the variances are actually, uh, are not equal. So equal variances assumed, um, this significance level tell me that, that they're not equal. So we're gonna to go to the equal variances uh, not assumed, so we're, we're assuming that the variances are not equal. So now we have this T calculated with that second equation that I, that I showed you all uh, in the class. Um, now obviously the degrees of freedom, the way, the way it was calculated. So if you remember, um, this is if the variances are equal. This is how you calculate the estimated standard error, and you would use this to calculate the T. If the variances are not equal, you're gonna use this equation to go about calculating uh, the bottom portion of the T. And then obviously to calculate the degrees of freedom, you're gonna use this equation, which is quite extensive. Um, and said that, this is the degrees of freedom calculated with that really, really long equation. So we're gonna be using this uh, section where the variances are not equal. And then the T for that is 7.324 with a significance level of 0 0.000, which if we're saying that the mean of males in the population is not equal to the means of females in the population, that's our research hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is saying that the mean uh, hours hours per week worked for males is equal to the mean hours of 
uh, work per week for females is equal? Well, the significance level tells us that we can reject this null hypothesis. We can reject at the 0.05, we can reject at the 0.01, and we, we can reject at the 0.001 alpha levels because as I stated already, this significance level is below the 0.05, the 0.01, and the 0.001 alpha level. And honestly, even returning back to that whole concept of variance is assumed versus variance is not assumed, that kind of actually doesn't even really matter right here because we can see that the T's aren't that much different. And then the significant levels are pretty much the same thing, which is the 0.000 significance level. Okay. Um, the other way that you could have done that is, like I said, you could return back to that table, the distribution of the T. You could look for a two tailed test. Um, so we have, uh, I think, like 800 degrees of freedom or something like that. Um, 873 and then 856, which means you'd be in using infinity. So you'd be using infinity. And then for a two tailed test, at the 0 0.05, you know that our T is bigger than that. Our T obtained is seven. Let's just go with this one because that's the right one, 7.324. So we come over here, 7.324. It's bigger than 1.926. It's bigger than 2.576. And it's bigger than this 3.291. So we know that we can reject the null hypothesis at all three levels, 0.05. 0.01 and 0.001. And since we can do it for a two-tail test, we can obviously do it as well for a one-tail test. Okay. Um, now, what this is telling us, the mean difference, is that the mean difference between the average hours of uh, work per week in the population between males and females is 7.352. So about approximately seven. 0.352 hours per week difference between males and females in the population. Obviously, males are higher. Okay? And then it also creates a confidence interval for the estimated difference between the population mean, between the means of the population. So we believe we're 95% we're confident that the mean difference in the hours worked per week between males and females is somewhere between. 5.382 on the low side and 9.323 on the high side, which means on average men work somewhere more uh, than 5.32 and somewhere between 5.382 and 9.323 more hours per week than females do. Okay, so that would be kind of like the confidence interval that we have. So we can be about 95% confident that men work on average somewhere between five and nine more hours per week than females do. Like I said, so we can reject the null hypothesis, and that obviously provides support for our research hypothesis that the mean hours uh, of, of work per week for males and females is not equal. And obviously, even if we did have like a direction here, which we could do a one-tail test, uh, it would obviously confirm this uh, one-tail test, our original research hypothesis, that the average hours of uh, time spent at work per week is significantly higher for males than it is for females in the population.